great well we might start them and then if anyone else is joining us like we've 22 signed up but usually we'll get around half the numbers who sign up on the day so we'll, we'll see who joins us this evening and um, but yeah welcome i'm gonna get back to my screen sharing now that i know that it has worked um so welcome to the second webinar in this series um uh these webinars are kind of done as a precursor to our challenge the 2024 climate heroes challenge I don't know whether or not everyone here is actually part of the challenge yet. So I'll just give it like a really brief overview. So Climate Heroes is a community group challenge. It's aimed to get people recording and logging and trying to do lots of different individual and community-based actions to try to reduce their climate footprint. And um, part of the aim is to collect the kind of the local actions that we can do as groups or community groups to kind of larger or broader scale issues. And hopefully we're hoping that some of these webinars will be part of that connection sometimes when we're doing all these individual actions uh, or community actions it's difficult to see how they actually relate to the kind of wider problems that we have in relation to climate change in the world but hopefully we can have some interesting discussions around those this evening and um, tonight we're going to look at so there's four themes within climate heroes uh, as a challenge and those are transport food consumption and energy and today's webinar is focused on transport as a theme and um, we're going to learn more from samantha later she and she's very kindly shared some uh, photos and things with me of the work that they're doing and we'll get to hear lots more about their uh, transport related project and hopefully we can kind of learn from each other um about what other groups have done before or what they're doing now and how we can all uh, improve our climate related actions so um and just again to mention about the competition it runs from the 15th to the 26th of april this year and um, so there have been previous years of climate uh, heroes competitions but that's the time frame for this year and um, yeah good stuff so just wanted to start that screen sharing things in a bit of a funny place don't want it to be too distracting uh if you wouldn't mind uh it's all great to see you have your cameras on so i can see everyone and uh, but would you mind introducing yourself and just let us know quite briefly what's your name and what community group are you a part of if you have signed up for the climate heroes or separately and um, what community group are you part of uh, in general and what what does that group do just in a couple of brief sentences so if anyone's brave enough to start we'd love to hear from you I can start. Um, Neve. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Patricia Patricia Sheehan, and I'm with Catholic Tidy Towns. And we went, we participated in this last year, so we're looking forward to it again this year. Thanks, Patricia. Okay. Um, my name's Samantha, and I'm with um, Myrtle Coast Resident Association. And like Patricia, we did it last year, and uh, yeah, we're all looking forward to it again this year too. Super. That's me. Climate Heroes veterans on, on board then. <laughs> I'm Mary and um, I've just registered a group called Green Hearts and um, I'm doing this for the first time. So really looking forward to getting actionable in local community. Great, welcome Mary. Hello there, I'm, uh, my name's Sharmaka and um, I'm actually a transport planner or transport consultant. And I've been uh, doing that for about eight or nine years. And um, I've worked with, you know, quite a wide range of the public on a number of transport projects and working on transport policy and was interested to hear about the climate heroes. Amazing. Well, welcome, Shama. It'd be great to hear your kind of transport expertise in this. I don't know if anyone anyone tonight is coming at this topic as kind of that role of expert and we're here to explore what we can do in a kind of local or community level. So it's really great to hear that we have a climate expert or a transport expert on board that might be able to give us some more uh, information around climate policy and planning. So welcome. Thank you. Um, OK, so I suppose I wanted to open up tonight with just showing you two images. It's possible that you've seen these images before, but I think they're quite interesting for opening up a discussion. And um, the one on my left, and I just let someone in here. And um, the one on my left is a picture from the 2023 uh, EPA Environmental Protection Agency report on emissions in Ireland. Um, and as you can see, overall in Ireland in 2023, we managed to reduce our emissions by uh, quite a small 1.9%. But as you can see here, transport, which is our second highest emitting um, area after agriculture, actually 
uh, raised in emissions and has continued to raise since then. So it's quite an important issue to be discussing. That's just, uh, explaining the reasons behind kind of transport as being one of our main key issues in climate heroes, but also in general policy and practice that we need to change in general. And then that second headline is from the Irish Independent um, explaining Irish people's uh, level of car dependency among EU citizens were second highest behind, I think, Cyprus, um, and that 76% of people use cars as their main transport every day. And I just want to put those uh, images up and give us a second to kind of look at them just and wonder, does anyone have any responses, any first thoughts, any, are they surprising to you or would you expect either of those um, transport related things to be occurring in Ireland? Um, so, uh, feel free to unmute and just give me your opinions or feedback or first thoughts about that. I think we just have Marion joining in. Uh, welcome. The others have just introduced themselves. Um, but as well, just uh, feel free anytime during this evening, if you have a question or anything to say, just unmute yourself and chat. Or if you can't do that, then just pop things in the chat and I'll be looking at that as well. So welcome, Marion. Anyone have any? Um... I, suppose I, I don't really find that too surprising, to be honest. I think... Um... Sadly, it's probably expected, those kind of facts and figures. Um, I mean, most people I know use their car as their main form of transport, and many households around here would have two cars per household as well. So, yeah, um, sad, but not surprising, maybe. Yeah, thanks. I was surprised in a way, but actually, when you think about it for a minute, when you actually look at kind of habits of Irish, Irish people, it's not as surprising in practice as it is in... Mm kind of dramatic headlines and mm. would people agree with Samantha that they, they weren't surprised or is this kind of shocking information to anyone yeah I'm, I'm not surprised and, and I, I suppose it's a lot to do with the infrastructure within mm. Ireland Dublin and the little calf so um I suppose people are driven driven to be in their cars because you know, of maybe the time it might take to get to a place um, but I think it still does there's, there's a lot we can do kind of personally we can we can we can look at it differently but I think that's historically we didn't think about it and it was just the easiest fastest way to get anywhere um, but there's room for improvement yeah definitely hopefully we can uh, make some kind of small community level changes here that might lead to something something bigger in the future Um, I wonder Shamaka would you have any responses to that I'm just very interested in hearing from somebody who's kind of worked in transport policy in the past um do those figures surprise you or is there any feedback you'd like to give on maybe why you think things like that are happening in Ireland or around the world um I mean yeah definitely it's, transport is a very key part of uh emissions and um about the the car dependency um i think yeah it's it's there's quite a sort of different levels or different angles to look at it from and um i mean one is the sort of you know government policies about how they you know tax vehicles and price roads and things so that sort of top level, um, then I think it's also really, it's really important nowadays that it, uh, you know, it all links to things like housing um, and employment. And um, I mean, I worked on, you know, quite a few uh, major infrastructure projects and it's, I think there's now really that sort of, drive to uh sort of connect you know the basically where people live and where they work and shop and um in so i mean in some cases there are these you know sort of like mixed use developments and possibly in more city centers but then uh that's not necessarily the case in maybe some more sort of greenfield suburban places um and i think the last bit is sort of like the grassroots level and uh people's sort of social attitudes to like maybe public transport 
I think historically or oh, there seems to be a sort of I don't know kind of default to sort of cars for I mean those for those who are sort of able to use it have the access and you know who can afford it um and then you know public transport is not really seen as uh something having the same sort of prestige or sort of utility mm -hmm. um and it's uh it's often i mean sometimes it is based on sort of facts but it's slow and expensive but it's um yeah it's trying to get that sort of balance um and in places like london i mean they've tried to use things like low emission zones and congestion charging but um i think there's you know in some more provincial places maybe not really there's not really that sort of political drive and uh it's um still sort of quite hard to uh get people out of their sort of cars I think it's interesting you mentioning that kind of getting people out of their cars and the attitudes around public transport that same article there from the Irish Independent was talking about Irish people being in like locked into car dependency number one because of infrastructure and the way that Irish towns and cities and are built around car use because they're they're not made for public transport use at the moment they're kind of expecting that the people who live there um yeah will... I think that sort of period of sort of era of let's say sort of car driven neighborhoods as you yeah, probably you would say like post-war um and then like you know sort of in this a lot of there were a lot of new towns built in the sort of 60s and 70s that were sort of I mean you may have heard of Milton Keynes um that's been sort of kind of developed with sort of this sort of different settlements or quarters linked by sort of dual carriageways um i think the sort of and then you've got big supermarkets i think that sort of peak is sort of over as far as i've can see and in most cases sort of some new newer developments they try to sort of at least to some extent sort of in a way sort of restrict the you know car parking and do well mm -hmm. provide some different options um and uh yeah i mean it's also sort of working with working with the sort of property developers as well um but mm -hmm. uh i'm not sure you how it's sort of in Ireland, but I can imagine there must be some sort of old city centres where you probably don't have so much. You got maybe people a bit, you know, younger or more single people, um, and uh, you may not have such a car dependency. But it's probably, you know, places which are a bit more like uh, suburban where you've got this problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be interesting hearing uh, people from the webinar this evening about how public transport is uh, in your area. We might discuss that a little bit later. But yeah, thank you for those points on our opening discussion. Just wanted to get us thinking about different transport related issues. Um, welcome to the people who've just come in. And uh, just to again remind you that if you have any questions or want to say anything at all during this webinar, just either unmute yourself or type them in the chat. Um, so moving on from that, I wanted to go into a little bit of a group activity. I think we have enough maybe for probably about two breakout rooms here, which is good. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this sheet in. It should be a PDF. So it should be granted to open in the chat in a second. Um, and it's basically I've been kind of looking and reading around lots of different quite a wide variety of perspectives around uh, transport and sustainable transport initiatives in Ireland and abroad. Um, and it's coming from quite a wide range of voices, people who support different public transport initiatives, people who maybe these lives are impacted by the production um, of goods and services and pieces that need to be used to be making different forms of transport. Um, 
an activist in the space and just general voices and things. So what I'm going to ask people to do is I'm going to put that in the chat in a minute. I'm going to break us up into two breakout rooms. Um, and then if you would take, I'll probably give you around five to 10 minutes in the rooms to have a read of those different perspectives and uh, to have a look at those discussion questions down the bottom. Um, and again, I'll send you that sheet now so that you can all have a look uh, and then we're going to come back together and ha either have a look at those discussion questions or people are sharing what you've discussed in your rooms um, and then have kind of a further discussion around some perspectives on transport. So let me just pop that in now. This is on. Sorry, I need to go out of full screen for that, I think. Actually, let me just stop sharing for a second. I'll be able to put it in the chat, I think. So could people let me know if they can access that before I send you off into the rooms and I can pop in and out and see what kind of discussions we're having as well. Should bring you to a PDF link of that document. But... It won't let me into the doc. It just says no access. Anyway, I opened it up for, for sharing for everyone. Sorry about that. Give me one second. Maybe if I share it as a photo. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry, I'm not the most uh, tech person this evening. No, I'm just going to put it up on the screen share and we'll have a group discussion about it just in case because I probably won't be able to figure out how to share it better than the, that I tested earlier and it worked, but obviously the settings are against me. So I'll, uh, I'll work to share my screen again and we can have a look as a group here. Can people see that okay? If I move. Yeah. Great. So um just taking again a few minutes to yourself. Um, uh, no need to share anything for the moment, just have a look for the next few minutes. Um, and then if anyone at some point wants to jump in and give opinions or feedback on either those discussion questions or just things that stood out to you while while reading those perspectives, we'd love to hear them.
So we've had uh, a couple of minutes to kind of have a look at these perspectives. Don't worry if you haven't gotten a chance to read them all or cover them all, but uh, you can continue having a look now as well. I'm just wondering, is there anyone uh, who'd like to share anything that stood out to them or answer any of those discussion questions in relation to any of those perspectives that were shared there? Hi Mara, I see your hand. You can just unmute if you want to if you want to share and, and just go ahead. Thanks. Hi. Um just I suppose the first thing that really stood out for me was this this phrase completely detached from reality. And I think there it's it with climate action and and in relation to transport now being sustainable, it's how to connect things for people like how how does that have an impact on climate and I, I actually do think that a lot of people haven't got a clear understanding of how getting into your car for small journeys makes a big difference um, um but when you're doing it a lot um and uh, we spoke about that earlier about how people are are, are car dependent mm -hmm. and that statement really sticks out to me that then the the one that connects like us with me with my laptop here me with my mobile phone that connects that to people that are enslaved providing for the materials that uh, provide my laptop and that's as slavery and um, because it's unjust they may be missing school they may be missing other things in life because of this greed um, is how I would phrase it. Um, and then um, the article about the schools um, pro or the cycling project really hits me because they said, well, this was, it was a collective decision. And I think that's really interesting that sometimes we blame our politicians or we blame the council or we blame somebody, but actually we don't voice what we need. And that is our responsibility if we don't. So. Um, and if we do, then it's also to follow through to make sure that things are going in the right direction, even if they're not there yet. Um, so I think that's, that really highlights for me our collective um, responsibility in providing transport that's sustainable. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I suppose one of those challenges is how do you connect with people who have little or no interest in kind of climate activism, make it something that everyone feels a need and a want and that they actually feel like they can participate and that it's something for them it's not just you know one group of, of the population is working on this it's like how can you embody it um, and allowing other people to kind of participate so I would assume that most people here tonight would be here because they have some interest in in climate and some interest in kind of making those changes but one of those challenges is how do we kind of use what we've learned and use what we do as a community to reach reach others in a further way that uh wouldn't have any prior interest or knowledge and that's kind of hopefully one of the challenges that can come out of this climate heroes is maybe that there's, your group is set up by somebody who's really passionate about it but maybe how can you introduce other people in your community or further on in some of those actions that maybe wouldn't have any prior knowledge or interest in and get them involved so thanks for sharing those those feedback points it's great does anyone else have any reactions or um answers to any of those questions or any of those quotes that really stood out to you or um, they they all stood out, but just really as Mary has said, is I I get like we're here because we have a, a certain amount of information and and interest in it. Lots of people can't connect the dots and don't realise the impact of the way we're living and the impact. So say around transport, I suppose, um, at one level, if people have cars, and then there's there's this historical feeling of achievement or success in that car they must drive it that so there's a societal kind of historical um sense of of economic whatever um success so to actually um redefine what it is to be a citizen citizen maybe not to be a consumer and then a messaging around that but this it would be great for Ireland to have one key message maybe around moving from consumer to citizen and then 
you could link that into transport, energy, food and all that with a key action. But I think if people begin to see the link, that would support people change behavior and maybe I say not get into the car for 5k um, will be a start. It's interesting that you mentioned kind of messaging and messaging around consumerism there. I was actually on a, a webinar earlier today by another, as I work from Global Action Plan, who's running this competition. There, so there's other kind of international global action plans. And I was on a webinar delivered by the Global Action Plan UK today, talking about kind of consumerism with the younger generation and how they give workshops in schools for teenagers, all about consumerism and just the role of, of advertising and, and telling that story of, well, we are a consumer um, and how that, uses advertising to get people to buy more and want more all the time so I wonder how we could use kind of storytelling in that way to tell a different story of you know what is it to be a citizen does that mean to be a consumer how can we this was responsible consumer is almost a challenging topic in itself as well but it still has consumption in it so it's how how do we balance that between having what we need um over consuming uh, and learning to to live with that and do different actions especially related to transport and you know the car ads saying wow this car is amazing how do we have an ad to say do you need a car how do you make the bus cool that's a it's a, it's a challenging one so yeah thanks for sharing that Does anyone else have any um, kind of feedback or opinions or thoughts on that before we move on for a bit? I just think tra public transport, there's something maybe we haven't covered and that's people's safety and, mm. and, and um, crime. And that's very often maybe not something openly discussed, but um, we're aware of, of crime on transport and definitely the drivers of those vehicles are you know um very aware of of their safety and the need for it and um, so i think we need that part as well we need to, to know that they are safe places for our young people to travel on their own independently and um, for our older members of society to, to do that and to know that there i grew up in an era when there was always a conductor on the bus and that person always the conductor always helped you like if you needed something, carry your bag on or, you know, um, find a seat if you couldn't see one and help an older person. Um, and, uh, I, you know, that sort of level of assistance went then when we just have drivers only. And we had cameras, but we didn't have assistance. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Um, I suppose, yeah, in one of those... The EPA did another report on public transport and what the main barriers to, to public transport were for, for people in Ireland in general. And they did a specific study on Dublin and, and that was found one of the kind of main fears around public transport was people felt a lack of safety. There was a financial barrier to it and, and also that there was you know, accessibility barriers as well. And actually that moves us very nicely on to our, our speaker, Samantha, who's going to talk about uh, accessibility and public transport and the work that her association has been doing with that. So let me stop sharing there. And um, she's very kindly put together some photos um, from the group and the work that they're doing. So I'll just get that up and let Samantha take the floor. So one second there. Can you all see that all right? Perfect. Yeah. Great. So, uh, yeah, Samantha, please tell us all about the great work you've been doing. I've been looking forward to it. So I had a, a really quick call on the phone, but I want to want to hear more about uh, the actions you're taking. Things. So thank you. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I'm from Myrtle, the Post Residents Association. Um, we're a relatively new community group. We only formally established about a year and a half ago now. Um, and we started off with a core group of about 15 people on our committee. Um, but within that year and a half, we have done a lot of work within the community. Um, one of the things was obviously taking part in the Climate Heroes last year. Um, 
we had never done anything like that before. Obviously, it was a new challenge as far as I know anyway, but certainly nothing we'd done as a community before. We didn't really know what to expect from it. Um, we didn't know what it was going to be like or if people would get involved with it even. Um, sometimes it can be kind of hard to get people involved with community stuff. So um, we didn't know how it would go. Um, we were very lucky though that people did get on board with it. We actually got people outside of our residence association asking if they could join in our team. Um, and it went really well. We uh, we actually came third overall in the challenge. So we were delighted with that last year. Um, and yeah, it was it was really beneficial to us as a community group. I have to say, um, I don't know if I can scroll through these slides or if I have to get you to there. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> um, but yeah, we did. We came third. It was lovely. We had a nice day out at the uh, little award ceremony and swords um, afterwards. Um, but I think on the next slide, I kind of mentioned, um, oh, that was just us in the paper, <laughs> sharing a little photo of us in the paper, but um, we actually found that we made some lasting changes within our community group. Um, for us, it was a real educational um, thing that we took on. Um, we didn't realize how much we would really take from it and how much for us, it was the impact that the small changes would actually have. And um, you know, people were kind of thinking, oh, what's it matter if I'm only doing this or only doing that? And it's actually those little small changes all adding up. That's what we kind of took from it was how small changes can have such a big impact. Um, some kind of things that seem minor to some people, but have actually turned out to be a massive kind of changes for us is that we made a conscious effort to use less paper. Um, we used to do a lot of printing flyers and things, and we've really tried to cut as far back as we can on that. We do very little printing now. Um, we also used to use paper cups and plates for our monthly events. We did um, litter picks, and we still do every month. Um, but adversely, we were using paper cups and plates, which is kind of going against the, the whole eco-friendliness of our litter picks, I suppose. Um, so we made an investment with a grant from Fingal County Council to purchase reusable plates and cups, which we now use. And we um, we take them out every month and for all of our events. And that's been noticed by the community as well that we're doing this. And it's, it's definitely been a really welcomed change that we've done. Um, for all of our events, we're trying to look at how we can be more sustainable or more eco-friendly. Um, and uh, for things like the award ceremony and swords there when we got our uh, lovely award for um, last year's event, we carpooled. We try to encourage that as much as possible. We're really putting a push on using public transport where we can. So um, lots of small steps, but they've definitely added up to make some big changes for um, our residents association. Um, one of the bigger things that we've been working on this year um, is a campaign that we started regarding access to public transport. So we live in Valdoyle and our uh, closest uh, train station is Clongriffin train station. Um, we literally live in the estate in which the access point is built. So it's literally a five minute walk from most of our houses to this train station. Um, but what we found was that the access is just not inclusive at all. Um, it's essentially a temporary stairwell. Um, there's four flights of stairs that you have to go up and one single lift, which was put in um, 13 or 14 years ago. Um, the whole structure is not fit for purpose. It was only meant to be a temporary structure. And without going into too much detail into the background of things, um, the structure and the land that it's on is owned by a private developer, but it is there to provide access to public transport. So it's finding that um, line of should access to public transport be in the hands of a private developer? We would argue no, because we have had so many difficulties with getting the private developer to maintain the access point to a level that allows it to be fully accessible. Um, so you can see there, um, that is the state of our lift in the middle picture. When it works, um, it's often inaccessible anyway, because it's used as a toilet. Um, I will not go into detail as to everything that has been found in that lift, but let's just say nobody would want to step foot in it at any time. Um, and that's when it's working. So generally it's out of service, um, either through vandalism or just down to the fact that it's not being maintained. Um, at one stage last year, the lift was out of service for 100 days. So that's a significant portion of time for people to be um, left relying on stairs. That is if you can access the stairs. There is obviously a huge cohort of our community who 
cannot manage the stairs. So that obviously includes people with um, disabilities, people with poor mobility, um, people with sight uh, or vision issues, um, people with sensory impairments, uh, people that use bikes, people that use buggies. Um, we have parents of twin babies in our estate. Um, the One of the mums got in touch with us to say that she missed her six week appointment at the hospital with her newborn twins because she the lift was out of service. She couldn't lift a double buggy up by herself and it's an unmanned station anyway. There's nobody there to offer any assistance when you get there. So for us, um, accessing public transport I mean, it's a wide scale issue for Ireland in general, I believe. Um, we have other stations nearby that have similar issues with lifts and such like. Um, but for us, it was obviously very personal. That this is on our doorstep. So um, we started a campaign to try and um, get access improved. Um, it's been a year long campaign. It's still ongoing. Um, it started very small, with just a couple of us um, trying to put forward to the community the importance of needing universal access. Um, we started a petition to see if we could get people to support us. And within just a few days, over 3,000 people had signed the petition. So Baldoyle that I live in has a population of 8,000 people. So 3,000 people signing up within the first few days was incredible. Um, there's a photo there. We push this around social media on the other side of the train station that goes down to Clongriffin. Um, they actually have an open air ramps and steps. Uh, there's no access issues on that side. So our argument was, why can't we have this on our side? Um, so yeah, the push was just to make it more accessible. Um, I work as a special needs assistant. So in my day-to-day -day life, inclusivity would be a massive thing for me personally, but then also representing the community um, we were trying to take into consideration everybody within our community that deserves the right to access the public transport. So it started with the petition. Um, as I said, it garnered great attention. Um, we then uh, held a public forum, public meeting. We invited everybody to come along and have their voices heard. We had some of our local representatives there. Um, we were really lucky that a few um, local councillors in particular really came on board with this um, from the very beginning, um, as did a, a, a charity called Access for All Ireland. Um, they were all so supportive. Um, we had it raised in the doll so far. I think it's been raised seven times in the doll in the past year, which um, is an incredible amount of support that we've had from our TDs on this. Um, and then we also hosted a peaceful demonstration at the stairwell itself. We invited all of our local councillors and TDs to come along. Uh, some of them, although they are local to us, they hadn't necessarily been to the train station in question themselves. Um, and it was their first time seeing the state of the access. At that time, the lift was out of service. Um, so they got to see firsthand what it was like. Um, we had well over 100 people turn up for that, which we did not expect. Um, we didn't, we were blown away by how much support we had. Um, you know, we had people there who had brought their teenagers who were a baby when that access was built and they were promised then, you know, we know you're struggling with your buggy, but we will have this fixed. And it's, you know, teenagers 16 and it's still like this. So, um, it was great. We had a, a huge amount of public support um, and it really brought the community together. And um, that was a big thing that came from it as well, is that it really felt like the whole community was coming together to work on something so important. And the government were and are constantly pushing for us to use our public transport. It's so important to use public transport. And of course it is. We 100 percent agree. But that's well and good if you can access it. And for a majority of our community, we weren't able to have that access in place for them. Um, it has had great traction. We've been in the news multiple times. Um, we have been in various newspapers. That's just a small selection of them, but we have hundreds of articles written about us. We've been on um, FM 104, Q102. We've been on a few of the local radio stations as well. Um, it's, it's something that seems to have struck a chord with a lot of people. Um, and people obviously noticing that we were making a lot of noise about it and then highlighting that they were having the same issues at, at their train stations. So, I mean, it's not solely just an issue that's affecting us. It's it's obviously a, a much wider discussion that needs to be had. Um, so we were delighted to put a bit of a spotlight on this issue. Um, we 
uh, managed to organise an on-site meeting with the Minister for Transport, which was a huge, huge thing for us. Um, it took a few months to arrange this, um, but he actually came on site and seen for himself. And again, like most of our other um, TDs that had been out, he hadn't been to the station himself. Um, and that was his first time seeing the, the situation. And he was taken aback. You could see he was very taken aback by exactly what we were dealing with. Because it's one thing hearing about it, but actually seeing it for yourself. Um, he actually bravely got in the lift with us and um, used the lift. And he admitted himself it was absolutely horrific to have to stand in that and the smell and, and whatnot. And as I explained to him, it's all well and good us being able to even use the lift even if we have to when it is filled with urine, but for a person with a wheelchair that has to push those wheels, if there's urine on that floor, they're getting it all over their hands. It's such a health and safety issue. It's so degrading. You're taking the dignity away from people um, having this as the only form of access. Um, so we had the meeting with the Minister for Transport. It went very well. He um, agreed that we absolutely needed something done and agreed that he would support us in um, any way that he could. Um, it's been a really collaborative process. Um, it's obviously been at government level with the TDs and within the Dáil and with the Minister for Transport on a local council level. Um, it's been raised at most of the area council meetings for the past year. All of our councillors have actually come together to work on this as a whole. So rather than, you know, they're kind of putting party politics aside, essentially, and coming together to work on this, which has been huge and very welcomed by all of us. Um, it's obviously needed the input of Fingal County Council because um, it takes into consideration the planning permissions and conditions that are on the site for the private development. Um, and the National Transport Authority also got involved at this stage as well. So it has been a very collaborative um, project. It's been highly, highly frustrating at times, um, but because it is so important, we just haven't given up on it. So I suppose where we are now is um, we are in a good position. Um, the top photos here on this slide show what the lift or the stairwell was like at night time from as early as four o'clock in the evening in the winter. Um, there was no lights in it. It was a massive safety issue. I mean, it still is in its current situation, but uh, particularly when it's that dark. Um, I know I, as a woman, didn't feel safe walking through it. Um, if you have any kind of sight issues or vision issues, you would very much struggle. We've had people having accidents and falling because they weren't able to see the steps clearly. So I suppose now the stage that we're at, we have had um, new lighting put in um, and the NTA are involved, which has been very successful. They commissioned an options and feasibility report and that report has recently come back giving short term, medium term and long term plans to improve the access point. Um, and the NTA have agreed to fund these as well, which was huge. Um, we actually have a meeting next week to discuss that report in full. And then following that report, we should get timescales. But we're hopeful that the start of the short term improvements will be within the coming weeks. Um, but from speaking with the NTA as well, I suppose one of the points that we wanted to make when it comes to public transport and accessing your public transport is that when you're talking about the journey and um, you know taking that line of travel, the journey isn't just the train journey or the bus journey. Your journey starts from the door. So you have to think about the access from your house to your destination. Obviously that includes the public transport, but it also includes everything in between, the infrastructure that you face in between, making sure that everything's accessible. Um, one of the big takeaways for us during this whole process was the phrase nothing for us without us and it's kind of the importance of including the people that are most affected within the discussions so it's all well and good for us to sit able-bodied making these decisions you know because it would be nice for us to have a nicer access point but actually there's people that rely on having full accessibility and they're the ones that are best placed to know uh, what what is needed um, for that in fact, we invited Access for All Ireland to the meetings that we had with the NTA on site. Um, we have asked for them to be present at the findings being uh, presented to us next week as well, um, because we feel it's important to have own voice input into these discussions. And I think that's a big thing going forward um, when we're talking about any kind of infrastructure to do with public transport is 
including the, the fact that we need to make sure that there is inclusivity, but including those voices in the conversation, we have to make sure that we're including own voices in the conversation. Um, it's something that's really been hammered home to us um, as a residents association and the community work that we're doing. Um, and it's something that I think needs to be a uh, focus of community or council level or government level decisions that are being made. Um, that we need to include as many people within the conversation as we can that are going to be affected um, by this. So um, that's where we are now. It's It's been quite a big project, but it's kind of one thing it's shown us is that the, the power that a community can have. Um, it started off just a couple of us wondering, can we do anything to try and improve this? It led to the community getting right behind us. And um, we're very positive now at this stage um, that there will be some serious action taken on this. So um, for us, it's been a huge success so far. Obviously, it's we've still got our our um, our work to be done, making sure that the NTA follow through on all these promises and that timeframes are kept to and and things like that. But so far, um, we're very proud of how far we've come with it. Um, we're proud of the message that we're sending about the inclusion and accessibility that needs to be in the conversation to do with the accessing of public transport. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of our bigger projects that we've we've worked really hard on. Um, a smaller project within the community actually that I didn't think to mention to Neve before, but it has come into my head is um, on a smaller scale. Uh, we have a new school opened up in our estate as well. Um, I work in an autism class within that school. We have two autism classes and um, we're trying to make sure that we can get the children in our classes out and about as much as possible. And it's been really interesting actually linking in with um, some of the officers within Fingal County Council on ways that we can, can be more inclusive. Um, and just discussions about using bikes and things like that. There's some really interesting chats about um, accessible bikes where it's nearly like a tuk-tuk, an electric charged tuk-tuk that you can kind of have the children in the back and a couple of people kind of cycling the electric bike at the front and stuff. So um, on a kind of smaller scale, and that, that would be a more personal level for me within the school, that's something that I'm kind of looking into at the minute as well is trying to encourage um, getting out and about on these kind of things, just linking in with them. Um, with the officers in Fingal County Council on that as well. So yeah, we're trying to do as much as we can to um, increase the use of public transport, um, increase the accessibility to all of our infrastructure in the area, including, um, very importantly, uh, public transport. Um, so yeah, so that's just some of our work that we've been doing. <laughs> Amazing. Um, thank you so much, Samantha. I really appreciated all the information you gave there. And uh, I was looking forward to kind of hearing about it. I just there's something about hearing a real time, real life story of community action success. It's just so empowering. And I think a lot of us who are interested or work in the space of climate or, or anything kind of related to it. And um, it can be very disheartening a lot of the time to hear all the, the news that comes out, just being able to to hear a story of something that went really well and that, you know, um just worked out so well. Uh, well hopefully, if I, if I come back on next year, maybe I can give you some some really positive and you know updates that have actually gone ahead and happened. But yeah, very positive so far. So hopefully, it all goes ahead. Yeah, thank you for the heartening community success story. We hope <laughs> some more of those come out um, from from Climate Heroes Inspiration maybe at some point. And um, thank you. So I'm just gonna finish mm -hmm. up. Um, when I can get my my screen sharing is not going very well today um but just to kind of wrap up today talking about the rest of the climate heroes plan if I can get that open um, sorry may I ask one question of Samantha please Neve. Yes. Samantha um I'm just curious about insurance on the stairwell and the the, the whole the whole area you spoke about the lift and everything and if that's in the hands of a developer and they have to pay insurance for it and it's not being maintained i don't know how any insurance company would cover it um well yeah i mean <laughs> you I'm know for sure myself i mean they obviously they have to have the insurance there they have to have the i presume it's some kind of public liability insurance for if any accidents happen or or such like um there have been accidents happen within the stairwell now nobody has put in any claims as far as i'm aware for anything um but 
I mean, it would be in their very best interests to get the access um, sorted to a level where they don't have to worry about all these accidents happening. So, um, yeah, there's nothing we can do as a community group on, on that part. It's definitely in the hands of the developer, but um, you would imagine it would be within their best interests to be upgrading and maintaining things. Um, yeah. Does anyone actually, I meant to say that, does anyone else have any questions for Samantha about the process um, or, or any of the, the bits that were done behind? Or also, again, we only have a couple of minutes left, but would anyone have any other kind of examples of something their community group is doing related at all to traveller transport or uh, sustainable transport, or maybe something they'd like to see in the future happen in their area to, to have better sustainable or public transport links? I was just going to add something, Samantha, I thought what you've done is really, really amazing because it really, as you say, it's local action, but huge, huge national impact if it could go just that little bit further. And the fact that you had the Minister of Transport there, you have identified a problem. Um, it aligns with um, the national kind of plan where if we get more people back in public transport, we will reduce the cars and carbon emissions. But there's one little step. Can they do a full audit maybe on all um, accessibility um, okay, Ireland are looking for, you know, the network, the infrastructure for new train lines or bus corridors. But actually that part that you've identified is, is a stop for some people to get on that train. So yeah. um, if yours goes um, as successfully as, as you want it to go, the next level is they say this is um, probably a national issue that could support our targets to get people back in public transport. And could it go that bit further, do you think? I would love it to. Um, I know obviously within our community group, we're obviously only focused on our uh, community that's affected. Um, but on a personal level, and I would be quite big on um, community activism on a wider level, um, I would absolutely love to see it go further. Um, I brought that up with the Minister for Transport when he was here. Um, it's something I would absolutely love to push for. Um, I think there's there's two things to consider as well when we're looking at it is a when we're building infrastructure we absolutely need to make it clear that universal access is included from the beginning of the plans um but be like you say doing an audit and making sure that changes are made to to make sure that ones that aren't inclusive at the minute for for accessibility will be in the future um and then there's the 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 argument i suppose of the access to public transport being owned by private developers and should that ever happen? Because we have been, like I say, 14 years this year in this position fighting um, now on a much smaller level, kind of, I suppose, not giving out, but, you know, just being unhappy with the situation. And it is only in the past year we've really put up a, a big campaign for it. But I mean, that's 14 years of having to live with this. So I suppose then um, it's maybe looking forward for uh, future planning permissions and things that if there is going to be public transport put in there, should we be doing it on land that's owned by private developers? No, we should have CPO orders in place where it's actually given to a public body so that it's governed by the government and and can be addressed quicker then in that, in that case. So that would be where I would like it to go and where the, the chats go down the line, um, it would definitely be an area that I'd be keen to, to look into. Yeah. Thanks, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you. I think access to DART is... Um is a problem in more than one station like you know when you stand on the the black rock or amongst Down station which i'm not actually close to the dart at all i have to get a bus to a dart but if i ever do get the dart there's usually a list of uh lists or lifts that are out of commission always you'll always see probably five or six or seven a day lifts out of commission and that's just and you'll actually find that those lifts aren't up to date either um and that's something that access to all ireland highlight on a daily basis on their twitter and their social medias is that there's lifts um, but there's no saying that lifts are working when they're not working and vice versa. You have to check every day whether or not. Yeah, so it's not that. reliable. Thank you. Um, so I'm just conscious of the time. It is eight o'clock, so I don't want to keep people any longer. Um, but again, this PowerPoint and the video as well, we shared um, via link to people who've turned up and the people who hadn't managed to come today. Uh, and it'll also be shared on our ACT Facebook group where a lot of um, resources and information are kind of put up um, around global citizenship issues uh, and around the Climate Heroes competition in general. So uh, I will send that link if anyone wants to join and tell us any more about what your group is doing or kind of stories that you've seen around. And um, just to finish up by saying, 
the Global Action Plan does a lot of work around global citizenship in general, relating to transport and other projects. Um, and we would love to kind of work with community groups and try to help them uh, in what they're doing and maybe provide workshops or uh, building knowledge or groups. Or again, if you have a kind of a plan in place, we'd love to be able to support you uh, doing some kind of positive actions. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to get in touch with us either by our website or uh, at sdgs at globalactionplan.ie and um, again if you want to see this recording it'll be emailed um, on the act facebook um, i think that is it if you haven't signed up for climate heroes yet we would love to see you and your community group there uh, and looking forward to see all of the groups who have already signed up and the great changes that you'll make and hopefully they'll be as impactful <laughs> as uh, samantha's experience was last year and um, so yeah any information if you haven't found it yet is on climateheroes.ie and I'll stop sharing now just to say thanks a million uh, and hopefully you guys were really as inspired by Samantha's story as I was um, and yeah good luck looking forward to see how you all do in the competition and and what changes you manage to make with your communities and with your individual actions as well and hopefully they lead to some kind of larger scale changes thank you thank you thank you everybody bye-bye thank you thank you See some nice messages there from uh, Marion saying congrats Samantha on your accomplishments and thanks for sharing it's encouraging to see how you've succeeded by your perseverance and ability to involve people who are able to help they get things done uh, and Anne as well saying thanks for the information see you at the next one so see you as well Anne. thanks a lot thank you very much team effort I have to say <laughs> but thank you very much very impressed thanks a million guys have a lovely evening and good thank luck you. bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.